receive and, and words to be given. But I believe the word for 2013 is greater things are yet to come. Greater things are still to be done. That song was written about, uh, was written for for the city that uh, that the band was in, writing the you know writing the song as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. <laughs> I believe the Holy Spirit gave them utterance to to uh, to speak things that uh, they were saying over the city there in the I believe it was the Philippines, uh, somewhere in Southeast Asia. They they were asked to the band was asked to sing in a in a, in a brothel or a bar, um, and uh, the bar owner didn't didn't I guess know a whole lot of English, but he asked them to come in and sing because they were a band, and they began to just declare that there's greater things to be done in this city. You know that's 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 how things are going to happen in the communities that we live. Is that we declare and release faith-filled words get vision for our communities and begin to speak it out. The greatest place to get vision is God's Word today. Amen. I want you to turn to Jeremiah 29 verses 11 through 14. Uh, it it uh, kind of surprised me when I saw what Pastor Donna had uh, written up here, Jeremiah 29 11. She had already been speaking about that, but the Lord given this, this to me as, as just an opening for you today to Kind of see where uh, where all this is going. Hallelujah! I do have something that I want to give to you at the end of the service. It is a word for the new year, and uh, I, I mailed out about fifty three copies of this, <laughs> uh, along with a uh, with a letter. Uh, if you didn't get one, it's because you didn't need to get one. <laughs> I sent them out in the mail. Yeah, 53. Yeah, in the mail. Yeah. And uh, and if you didn't get one in the mail, it's because uh, I guess you didn't need to get one in the mail. So uh, anyway, where was I? Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil to give you hope in your final outcome then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear and heed you then you will seek me inquire for and require me as a vital necessity and find me when you search for me with all your heart I will be found by you says the Lord and I will release you from captivity. Oh, well, you know, when, when Jesus came saying that, remember that's, that really uh, is, is reminiscent of what, of what Jesus said when he said he come to set the captives free. And here the, the, the people that was listening to him said, we're not in bondage. Did, did, do you remember that? Remember that where, where Jesus, you know, was telling, said, you know, whom the Son is set free is free indeed, and he was talking about you being free and set and being set free and all this, and they were like, we're not under Egyptian bondage, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but see, the bondage Jesus was talking about was a spiritual bondage, was a, a bondage to the things that keep the plan of God for moving moving forward for their lives individually and as a people. Well, you know, God has a plan, not a resolution. <laughs> God's made a plan, not just a resolution. A resolution, as defined by the dictionary, is the act or process of resolving, the act of analyzing a complex notion into smaller ones, the act of of answering or solving the act of determining the some examples of this is the court system and uh, in, in an attempt to resolve issues they create a what a resolution a written resolution uh, we found a resolution to the dispute we might say 
Uh, computer screens have a high resolution <laughs> or your monitor may have a low resolution okay so the word resolution means a lot of things to a lot of different people and at the beginning of the year they talk about making resolutions well why do we make resolutions well because there's a problem <laughs> there's a problem that we want to fix the resolution or a resolution is simply an act or attempt to change a behavior or situation you know what we need to get out of the acting business <laughs> that's that's what a lot of resolutions are about just an act or a, just a just a, a well we know that there's a problem so we need to come up with a solution well okay I, I gained 10 pounds so I need to lose 10 pounds well how do I do that I can either eat less or I can exercise more or if I want to speed the process I can do both <laughs> So people are making resolutions all the time, but you know what the the what I believe uh, the Lord has spoken to my heart about is if we uh, let me continue with this thought in the church we've got to stop acting like we're going to do great exploits. We need to start doing that. We need to start making resolutions. Well, you know, uh, for this year I'm going to start doing this. Will you really? Will you, will you start and finish? It's not about starting the race that impresses God. It's about finishing. It's the finishers that win. It's those that do what? Endure to the end. That are found faithful. It's those that endure to the end. See, a lot of people start out well. A lot of us have started out well in different resolutions that we have made through the years. But... What happened? Well, we didn't stick with it. If we use the word resolution with its definition in mind, making yearly resolutions would be a great thing. But <laughs> the problem that we have is that we're not really resolute. Many times when we make the resolutions, uh, past, uh, not pastor, but uh, uh, President uh, Bush back in after 911 and we was attacked he said we are resolute in our efforts to find those who have perpetrated this and bring them to justice see now that's different than sitting down and saying you know what should we do see as long as we're in the act of something we'll never get it done as long as we're in the act of determining, deciding, trying to solve or break it down into simple, simpler, you know, problems, you know, as long as we stay in that mode of thinking, we'll never actually become what we need to be, and that's resolute. Resolute is what we want. To be resolved or resolute is great, but listen to this. Resolutions are only as good as your ability to keep them. That was really the the, the first uh, word from the Lord that uh, this whole uh, word for the new year. I'm going to read this first paragraph and let you all read it later, unless I feel prompted to read more later. But the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, "Resolutions are not only are resolutions are only as good as your ability to keep them, but vision, godly vision." See, when I talk about vision, I'm not talking about my personal agenda. Okay, I hope people by now understand. And maybe I should define, you know, uh, but godly vision is as good as the Father's plan for your life. Vision is as good as the Father's plan for your life. Many people make resolutions every year and fail miserably by the third or fourth week. You may say, I can't even make it three or four days is sometimes what I... I hear people... Uh, condemn their resolution before they even get started. Have you ever heard that? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna exercise and and diet, but you know, hear a butt thrown in there. You know, if we just get the butts out of the way, we probably move forward. 
but a lot of times you'll hear them say, but, you know, I've, I've got this thing and i got that thing. You know, when you talk about fasting, you think, well, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Well, you know, if, if we become resolute, get the butts out of the way, you know, many people say, well, I can't even make it three or four days. Or better yet, what I hear people say is, I'm giving up on making resolutions. Well, you know what? If you've made that latter statement, congratulations. You're actually on your way to change, and you don't realize it. <laughs> You're actually right now primed and ready for change. You don't realize it. That's that's certainly something that people can keep. But the underlying issue and the point is, once you give up making your resolutions and you are a believer, now see, I, I'm, a lot of times I'm assuming that we're all believers, and, and those that listen and those that hear, see, a believer thinks differently than the world does. You know, a believer is thinking, how can I help my unbelief? You know, strengthen me, help my unbelief, Lord, just like the disciples, you know, help our unbelief. That's, that's the heart of a believer is to help my unbelief. Well, resolutions are as on, only as good as your, your ability to keep them. Satan will throw everything at you and I to get us off track. Think about it. Sickness, financial challenges, family disagreements, fear, doubt, unbelief, anger, resentment past failures new opportunities you know that's probably got to be one of the biggest things that gets people off track is they'll be going down the road doing great and all of a sudden a new opportunity comes up and it's like Woo, we're off to something new and then get over there and realize that the newness that the, that the excitement the zeal and everything that came with the new thing man that's got to be tended still and sometimes the new thing requires even more from us than what we had before. And then we end up failing at the new adventure because the luster is off and you, you get to see people face to face. And you begin to deal with people face to face and you realize, man, they're different than what I thought they'd be. Man, their TV persona is not what it is in real life. Really, you know, uh, you know, I, I love I love Pastor Sharon, but you know what? She's very black and white. <laughs> I love Pastor Sharon. She she's very black and white. Pastor Pastor Billy Joe, he was he he was the the, the laid back guy that you know uh, obviously his vision had become fulfilled and and a lot of things in his life you know become fulfilled and he was the guy out walking around the the parking lot picking up trash and and stuff like that. You know, Pastor Sharon's different. You know, uh, a lot of people have left the church because she's different. You know, uh, so, you know, the thing is, is, you know, I can't tell you the, the number of times that in the past we had made decisions to do something, realizing that, you know what, uh, we were just off chasing another pipe dream. And you know what? It uh, it it uh, it didn't have the same luster after a while. It, everything needs to be watered, nurtured, and cared for. Sickness, financial challenges, family disagreements, fear, doubt, unbelief, anger, resentment, past failures, new opportunities, relationships, employment or lack of employment, and I could go on and on and on about the things that Satan will try to throw at you and I to get us off of our resolution. Praise God. We must do more than make resolutions. We've got to resolve, decide, determine, choose to reset our thinking with the thoughts of God. And receive what? Receive his wisdom, strength, power, or simply put, his grace to accomplish the thing that he's called us to do. We've got to do more even than make these become resolved. Because I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that become resolved, but the first time, okay, you know, 
I'm tracking along on the treadmill and the next thing you know I, I get sick and, and I don't feel like getting on the treadmill so guess what I end up off the treadmill and I don't feel like I, I should rest my body is the wisdom <laughs> I should rest my body <laughs> hey, I'm telling you stuff I've been through I ain't telling you something I'm just making up here <laughs> I want to rest my body well, you know what? My resolution that I made or my my resolve that I created in my own mind, you know, sometimes we're, uh, we're what, a, uh, uh, what do you say, it, a, you're a legend in your own mind sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, running along good and then all of a sudden get, get to feeling bad. And next thing you know, you take two days off from doing something. And you know what? You don't want to do it no more. So that New Year's resolution or that Thanksgiving resolution or that Easter resolution or, you know, it doesn't have to be a January 1st thing that we make resolutions. Anytime we can make resolutions. But boy, I tell you what, as soon as, as soon as, as soon as the financial challenge comes in, you know, man, now I got to get up at five o'clock to go to work. So I can't get on the treadmill. Well, what I got to do, get up at four o'clock? I ain't doing that. <laughs> a lot of things can come into play that get us knocked off track. With God's grace, this is the key. With God's grace, we can weather any storm in life and remain, this is the key, faithful. Faithfulness will take us where resolutions will not. Write that down. I need to see that later. <laughs> Faithfulness will take us where resolutions will, will not. Why? Because we know the end of the story. See, I can be faithful. I can be faithful to the things of God because when I'm faithful to the things of God, it translates into a faithful God just pouring out His blessings. We are, we are God's ambassadors. We are God's representatives in the earth. We are Christ in the earth. Well, that's a, that's a tall order there for people to get around, their mind wrapped around. Hallelujah. We are the body of Christ. If Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing Christ, and we are the body of Christ, then guess what that makes us? It makes us little anointed ones <laughs> doing big things for God. As long as we remain under the headship of the Master, all is well. We can sing like we can sing that song, "All is well with my soul." All is well. Well, the word for the new year. And I think I am going to read this because I to read it with my pronunciation and and uh, punctuation. Amen. Listen, listen up, guys. I believe today I'm speaking to people who have received vision. Yet many times you and I question what's next. It's easy to get restless in the busy world we live. Rest assured God's plan for our lives doesn't change. Just because we're not seeing something happen favorable in our life right now. Consider for a moment with me. The children of Israel and boy this this story of how God delivered the people out of Egypt give them a vision all the way back to Abraham see this was a vision this was something given to Abraham not just to Moses something given to Abraham so they were gonna be in a land flowing with milk and honey and you know what I wasn't gonna go here but I think I am quickly Back in, back in Exodus 33, verses 1 and 2. See, now you got to remember, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy were all written by Moses. And the thread of events and all that sometimes gets a little skewed and, and you can misunderstand what, what's being said if you don't keep it in the proper context. But listen to this. 
Go to the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God said he would give it to them. Listen to this. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the inhabitants. Now I want you to... This was, this is so good. I'll tell you what. So if you if you get this in your spirit, man, it's gonna it's gonna revolutionize your your thinking about uh, about the plans and purposes of God. Now you got to realize you got to read a rest of that also because God in verse uh, verse three said, "I'm so angry with them. They're not. I'm not even gonna go." But He said, "I'm gonna send an angel that's gonna do the warfare." But here he says, I will send an angel before you and I will drive out the inhabitants. Now wait a minute. In the next verse he says, I'm not even going with you. What's he saying? He's saying if I send somebody as a representative for me, it's the same as me going. If I send you, then I'm going. But here... Here in verse 3, you keep reading that on down. He says, you, you people are a stiff-necked. Oh, he said, you are a stiff-necked people, and I'm not going with you. Because of all the murmuring and complaining and the, you know, we want, we want meat. If we 